It was dark when they brought floating cranes to rescue Percy. He purred smoothly towards them. Sir Topham had introduced him. Here is Diesel. I have agreed to give him a trial. He morning, purred Diesel in an oily voice. Pleased to meet you, Duck. Is lighted to meet such famous engines. On, he said. Diesel purred after him. Your worthy top, Sir Topham Hat to you, ordered Duck. Diesel looked hurt. Your worthy Sir Topham Hat thinks I need to learn. He is mistaken. We Diesels don't need to learn. We know everything. We come to a yard and improve it. We are revolutionary. Collect my cars while I fetch Gordon's coaches. Diesel, delighted to show off, purred away. Backwards, forwards. <laughs> he roared and gave a great heave. The cars jerked forward. <laughs> Covered and tried to push the cars back, but they you for arranging these, Diesel. I must go now. Don't you want this lot? No, thank you. And I've taken all this trouble? Why didn't you tell me? You never asked me. Besides, said Duck, you were having such fun being re-whatever it was you said. Goodbye. <laughs> Growled Diesel and scuttled away to sulk in the shed. Diesel, the new engine, was sulking. The freight cars would not stop singing rudely at him. I'm sorry our cars were rude to you, Diesel. Diesel was still furious. It's all your fault. You made them laugh at me. Diesel hated Duck. He wanted him to be sent away, so he made a plan. He was going to tell lies about Duck. Next day, he spoke to the cars. I see you like jokes. You made a good joke about me yesterday. I laughed and laughed. Duck told me one about Gordon. I'll whisper it. Don't tell Gordon I told you. And he sniggered away. Three engines barred his way. Duck called me a galloping sausage. He made cars laugh at us, accused the engines. Diesel lurked up. I can't understand it, sir. To think that Duck of all engines. I'm dreadfully grieved, sir, but know nothing. I see, said Sir Topham Hat. Diesel squirmed and hoped he didn't. Trundled sadly away. While Diesel smirked with triumph. was flooded with lights. Later, there was a familiar whirring. It was an important day in the yard. It came as a shock when he did. Good morning, squirmed Diesel in his oily voice. The two engines had not worked with Diesel for a long time. Your worthy top, uh, Sir Topham Hat sent me. I hope you are pleased to see me again. I am to shunt some dreadfully tiresome cars. Where? Why, from here to there, purred Diesel. And then again, from there to here. Easy, isn't it? With that, Diesel, as if to make himself quite clear, bumped some cars hard. Oh! screamed the cars. Growled Diesel. Diesel was working loudly and alone. Next morning, things were no better. Diesel's driver had not put his brakes on properly, and Diesel started to move. He went bump straight into Percy. Wake up there, Percy, scowled Diesel. You have work to do. He didn't even say he was sorry to Percy. So hard that the loads went everywhere. So who's going to tell him, I wonder? Two goody-goody tattletales like you, I suppose? 
Diesel, thinking he could get away with his bad behavior, was ruder than ever. Next day, he was shunting freight cars full of china clay. He banged the cars hard into the buffers, but the buffers weren't secure. The silly cars were sunk. So Topham Hatt spoke severely to Diesel. I shall not be inviting you back. Now Duck and Percy, isling cheerfully, they puffed back to work while Diesel sulked slowly away. At the station, Diesel oiled up to her. Toby's an old fusspot, she complained. Diesel sensed trouble and was delighted. How absurd, squirmed Diesel. Depend upon it, Mavis. Anything steam engines can do, we Diesels can do better. Diesel knew nothing about cars, but Mavis didn't realize it. up alongside. Everyone knows that tenders are a mark of distinction, but I'm afraid that no amount of tenders will save you in the end. We Diesels are taking over, and we don't need tenders to make us important, not even one. Gordon was most upset. He was feeling just... That night, Douglas was still working. He had taken the midnight goods train to a station at a faraway part of the island where only the diesels work. But before they could clear the station, they were stopped. Silent and still, lined up on guard. No, none! Where is he going? They hissed. Just down the line, replied Rusty. The engines didn't like Diesel. He was always being rude and always showing off. The next day, Diesel was working at the docks. When Sir Topham Hatt sees how good I am, he bragged to the trucks, he'll get rid of steam engines once and for all. As Diesel shunted them together, they started to sing. Is that all you can haul? Henry's loads are longer. Is that all you can haul? Henry must be stronger. Diesel was cross. He was sure that he was stronger than Henry. I'll push you all at the same time, he said. That's me, said Diesel, the world's strongest engine. And Diesel shunted five trucks together, then 10. Soon he had an enormous line of 20 trucks. Diesel pushed, and he pushed, and he pushed. Pull the trucks instead. He pulled, and he pulled, and he pulled. Help! Grease and oil, D. Sir Topham Hat looked down crossly at Diesel. Diesel was sent home in disgrace. One day, Sir Topham Hatt brought devious Diesel to the cement works. Later, Diesel was being careless. Don't interfere, sneered Diesel. Diesel was very annoyed with Fergus and started plotting a devious plan. He pretended to have news for Fergus. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to work at the smelters. Not anymore, Sir Topham. Oh, it's you, Oil Diesel. What are you doing here? Steamies can't help, not like a diesel. First, he shunted Thomas under the hopper. What's that horrible smell, he cried. Oh, it's just a stinky old steamy engine. No wonder Sir Topham Hatt is thinking of scrapping steamies. The next day, Salty had arrived. After he had been refueled, Diesel's engine started to rev faster and faster. Ha ha, he chuckled. This new fuel makes my axles tingle. I'm the fastest engine in the world. Look at me go! 
Suddenly, Diesel's engine coughed. Black, smelly smoke billowed from his exhaust. <laughs> I feel sick, wailed Diesel. The quarry manager was upset. Diesel was as green as a leaf. Then they heard a wonderful noise. Mavis and Diesel had all the bad fuel drained out of their engines. Marvelous, sighed Diesel. Soon, Sir Topham had arrived on... And even Diesel had to admit that Thomas is a very special engine. But Diesel was on the same line. Diesel had to back off. This made him cross. You steamies are old and clapped out, he sneered. When Sir Topham Hatt realizes this, you'll all be scrapped. Gordon squeaked and rattled and knocked all the way to Brendam Docks. Sounds like another steamy ready for the scrapyard, sneered Diesel. James saw Diesel up ahead. He had broken down and looked unhappy, said to himself. And even Diesel is an engine. Come on, Diesel. I'll push you back to the sheds. Pushing Diesel and pulling freight cars was hard work. At last, James got Diesel to the repair yard. But he still had to deliver his coal. I hear you've been making trouble for Ari and Bert. But you won't make trouble for me. I've got an important job to do. And when they arrived at Tidmouth Sheds, building the new ones was our important job, oiled Diesel. But we were delayed, so we couldn't finish it. The steam engines were cross with the diesel engines. Edward had to stay at the quarry. Oh, look, a stinky steamy. Oiled Diesel. Thomas arrived at the bridge with all the workmen, but Diesel was already there. I'm not talking to you, Oiled Diesel. You played a trick on me. You gave me bananas. And they didn't talk to Diesel either. The Diesels weren't talking to the steam engines. A diesel engine wouldn't need help, Oiled Diesel. Not like a steam engine. Thomas puffed slowly up to the bridge. I'll do it, Diesel oiled. I'm the strongest, much stronger than this steamy. Diesel was cross. This made Diesel crosser than ever. But Diesel was in the yard too. Now I'll show Thomas who's best. He gave the freight cars an extra hard shunk. Paint cans. There was green paint, yellow paint, and red paint. Stripey boiler, laughed Diesel. And he rolled away. We're biffing and over the island. And no work had been done. But they were worried. Mavis told Diesel the coaling plant was very busy. The plant manager was surprised to start the meeting. But Thomas was missing. The diesel engines didn't want to wait for Thomas. Trust the steamy to be late, grumbled Harry. This made the diesels cross. Maybe we should teach the steamies a lesson, said Harry. He blew his whistle. We don't want to work with stinky steamies, oiled Diesel. We're very proud and very excited. The water tops things up, oiled Diesel. The diesels were very cross. They had put up with them, so all of the engines joined in. The diesels forgot how stinky the steamies were. Suddenly, there was a familiar sound. It was Harold the helicopter. And working with steamies wasn't bad either, said Diesel. But they both liked to pull freight cars and coaches. And blasted their air horns.
I hope your click clunk gets better soon, oil diesel. <laughs> See you later, Rattler. You're looking very cheerful, Thomas, oil diesel. Haven't you heard about the curse of the cliffs, oil diesel? <clears throat> Whenever the first engine of the holiday season goes around the headland, a terrible fog comes down over the cliffs. The engine loses its way, and nobody knows where it goes. Diesel chugged away, leaving Thomas very unhappy indeed. Diesel was up to his old tricks. He rolled up behind Thomas and went, Boo! Trust a silly old steamy to be scared on Halloween, Diesel sneered. We'll see, oiled Diesel. Diesel teased Thomas with every click and every clack. When they arrived at the woods, Diesel cried, It's the haunted forest! And he called out, Whoa! Diesel's teasing made it seem spooky indeed. Then they came to the abandoned mine. But they could hear a banging noise. What was that? cried Thomas. Sounds like the ghost engine looking for a steamy to scare. He wished he felt as brave as he sounded. Thomas and Diesel had to stop at a red signal. Look out, cried Diesel. The ghost engine is after your funnel. Scared engine, scared engine, Diesel teased. He wanted to pay him back for all his teasing. Thomas and Diesel arrived at the flower mill. Thomas rolled up to collect the flower. It's a ghost engine, cried Diesel. It's come to get me. Thomas arrived at the bakery. He was tired, but happy. Ghost engine, sir, Diesel told Sir Topham Hatt. And it's come to get me. Diesel pulled up alongside her. You look very pleased with yourself, oiled Diesel. Gordon's not the only one who's special, Diesel oiled proudly. I haven't time to listen to you. I have to collect more coal. And Emily steamed off. This made Diesel very cross. He was coupled up to Gordon's special passenger cars. Why have you taken Gordon's cars, she snapped sharply. Because, Diesel began, I haven't got... Not if you won't listen groaned Diesel, and he sped away. Emily chased after Diesel. Diesel was being devious. And many different traps. Emily just couldn't catch him, and he made her look foolish. Diesel had hidden the cars in a siding, but he wasn't feeling well. Something was wrong. He started to slow down. Now I'm in trouble, he moaned. Diesel, said Sir Topham Hatt sternly. They're in a siding, sir, said Diesel quietly. Yes, sir. Diesel showed Emily the cars in the siding. Emily could see black smoke coming from Diesel's engine. My engine's old, spluttered Diesel. All that rushing around has worn it out. And you should have listened to me, snapped Diesel. Because Gordon's not the only one who set a record, oiled Diesel quietly. I've set one too. I've shunted more freight cars in one day than any other diesel, Diesel oiled. And he spluttered sadly away. Emily found Diesel. She told him he had to go to Knapford. Everyone agreed. Diesel was surprised. Whoa! Everyone cheered for Gordon and Diesel. But Billy wasn't pleased to see him. You didn't pick up the chickens, Puff Thomas, and you still haven't taken on coal and water. And Billy steamed off. Thomas was worried, and he raced off quickly for the depot. Then they delivered the diesel oil to Mavis and Diesel at the quarry. He was shunting freight cars with Diesel, Ari, and Bert. And the diesel engines didn't like working with Thomas. The problem with working with steamies 
is that they are much too stinky. Diesel, Harry, and Bert laughed and laughed. <laughs> Thomas, I need you to go to the dairy. Thomas saw Diesel waiting at a junction. Oh, no, moaned Thomas. If Diesel smells how stinky I am... When he arrived at the docks, Diesel was there being unloaded. He, you, you really are the stinkiest steam engine on Sodor, Thomas, he oiled. And this is the most stinky Sodor cheese I have ever smelled. Now go to the washdown, added Sir Topham Hatt. Just then, Harry and Bert arrived at the docks. All the diesels met in the sidings. The engines were very excited. They were to have their photograph taken. But the photographer was having trouble fitting all the engines into the photograph. A diesel, can you move in? Diesel moved in. No, that diesel had rolled right in front of him. And neither did Diesel. No one can see me at all. And he saw Diesel. Thomas didn't tell Diesel. He saw Diesel. Diesel was puffing straight to Didman. Crundle straight by. Saw Diesel. So Diesel didn't see the photographer, and he trundled straight by. Then, Diesel oiled round the bend. Diesel was surprised to see all the engines. He screeched to a halt. No one told me there was another photograph. And now he's late to do his own work. It's all my fault, sir. I didn't want Diesel to know about the new photograph. I did not. The photographer told me to move. I'm sorry, Diesel. I was wrong to think you did it on purpose. Soon, all the engines were lined up. Diesel agreed. Up the new billboard just in time for the celebrations. It was a wonderful party. Thomas agreed that the new billboard was the best billboard they'd ever seen. One day, Thomas and Diesel were waiting at the quarry. The quarry manager arrived. I have an important job, too. I'm sure I'll film my freight cars first. I can beat a steamy any day. I'll race you to the hopper. Thomas was sure he could win the race and do his job. He had a devious idea. We have to go backwards. So the two engines raced away. Backwards. Steamies are fast and steamies are first, Thomas huffed to himself. Thomas was determined to win. Thomas and Diesel took separate tracks to the hopper. But Thomas couldn't see that Diesel had arrived first, behind him. Thomas... <laughs> Silly slow, Steamy. I won the race. We still have to race backwards. So together, the two engines whooshed away. Thomas and Diesel raced buffer to buffer. Steamies are fast, steamies are first, Thomas huffed to himself. Then Diesel rolled in. Now we both want a race. We must have one more. Thomas was no longer thinking about his job. Diesel revved his engine. Two engines raced quickly away. Back. Thomas steamed into the lead. Win this race. But Diesel rattled alongside him. But Thomas and Diesel couldn't see them. They raced backwards towards Harry and Bert. With a... Uh-oh. Come on. Let's have one more race. No, Diesel. I have an important job to do. Thomas puffed over to Henry. Then Diesel rolled in. Yeah. Sure, Thomas. So together, Thomas and Diesel shunted the freight cars as quickly as they could. We still don't know who's the fastest. Let's have another race. So the two engines raced away to the quarry gates. And they both arrived together. Gave me bananas.